And now the answer to the question is visible to you on the screen. These are all the prophets that were mentioned by their names. Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam, Hazrat Hud alayhi salam, Hazrat Saleh alayhi salam, Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, Hazrat Lut alayhi salam, Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam, Hazrat Ishaq alayhi salam, Hazrat Shoaib alayhi salam, Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam. So they are total 10. Other than these prophets Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been mentioned but not by his name All the tribes of these prophets were called toward Allah but they rejected because of their refusal they faced Allah's wrath All of these details were brought up in yesterday's juz Today in juz 13 we will continue the story of Hazrat Yusuf alaihi salam which we started yesterday We read yesterday that he was thrown in a well and his father was lied about it but he remained patient then allah subhanahu wa taala tells us the entire story of hazrat yusuf alaihi salam's life this story just doesn't have any comfort when a person takes allah's way it is not possible that everything will come with ease it never happens with anybody there will be many hardships sometimes these hardships can be caused by people who live in your house and sometimes they are caused by outside people unexpected situations can arise therefore sometimes people have to step outside of their comfort zone also it is not possible that i won't face any difficulties my life will be filled with comforts and i will easily make my way to jannah we get this lesson from hazrat yusuf alaihi salam's story that he also faced many troubles like he got separated from his family his own brothers rebelled against him he was falsely accused and imprisoned all these things have been mentioned he faced all these troubles for a very long time then came the time when allah granted him relief this is the story of his entire life it is not a story of a day or two similarly there are ups and downs in everybody's life in this juz one sentence of hazrat yusuf alaihi salam has been quoted which is something to really think about he says indeed the soul is ever inclined to evil along with this there is the mention of allah's forgiveness nafs teaches us many things it puts different thoughts in our hearts sometimes it tells us not to put ourselves in trouble other times it tells us to live our life the way it is sometimes it also says you can commit sins today and do better tomorrow The horrifying thing is that it satisfies us on our current lifestyle situations and choices and we justify ourselves. Our nerves makes us content with our mistakes and the choices we make in our life. Therefore, we have been warned here to be aware of what your nerves tells you. So make dua to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pray to him. Everyone makes mistakes, so we must ask Allah for forgiveness. There is one more unique thing about Surah Yusuf. In this entire long story of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam, we find the tale of how a woman invited Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam towards a sin. Being a man, Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam first refused, then prayed to Allah subhanahu wa taala. Here, the story of a man's modesty is being told. Usually, when we think about modesty, the first thing that comes to our mind is women. However, Quran makes both men and women responsible for modesty. It wants both of them to shield their eyes and protect their chastity. In all these things, Quran is not referring to a particular gender, but every human being. Even here, Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam was worried about his own actions. 
This shows us that no matter what's going on around us, we are all responsible for our every single action, regardless we are male or a female. Another interesting thing is when Hazrat Yusuf a.s. is released from prison and is brought before the ruler of that time, what he requests the ruler? The ruler's name was Aziz. He requests the ruler to hand him the keys to the safe and mentions two of his qualities. Alim and Hafiz. Alim means knowledgeable and Hafiz means protector. This indicates that when you hand over power to someone, that person should possess these two qualities. If you have the capability but not the fear of Allah, you cannot be a decent protector or ruler. Now the story moves toward its ending. When Hazrat Yusuf alayhi brothers in search of food visit him, Hazrat Yusuf alayhi stops his youngest brother. Finally, all brothers recognize Hazrat Yusuf alayhi This is when Hazrat Yusuf alayhi dream about his brothers prostrating him came true. Now we are moving towards second roba of this jaz. It is mentioned again that people denying the truth is not something new. It happened in the past and it can happen in the future at any level. The important thing for us is to be ready to face any hurdles in the way of Allah. All the stories in Quran are narrated for a purpose that we learn what has happened in the past and what are the things we should be prepared for. If I read it carefully, every story brings a new lesson with it. The story of Hazrat Yusuf salam ends here. And Surah Raj starts which is a Madani Surah. I strongly recommend you read complete translation of this Surah. You will relate a lot of things in today's situation. This Surah starts with the declaration that Allah knows each and everything whether you can see it or not. Allah knows what every female bears inside her and what increases or decreases within the worms. He knows everything about every single human being. Where is each person? What is he doing? What is he going to face in the future? We can't see everything in this world, but Allah can. He knows what each individual speaks openly or secretly. He knows whether one hides in the darkness of night or goes about in broad daylight. We use different machines to try to predict about newborn's gender or forecast weather conditions, but sometimes they give us wrong result. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always knows everything in the most perfect manner. Then comes a very important rule. Indeed, Allah will never change the state of a nation until they change their characteristics themselves. Allah is not going to change the destiny of a nation until they want to change it and work for it. This is in their own hand. There is also a hadith stating that you will get the rulers according to your deeds. History proves it right. When a nation wants to proceed collectively, they head for it collectively. So the point is our lives as a person and as a nation are connected and affect each other. If I am a pious person or try to be and my society doesn't support me, then it is too difficult for me to be on the right path. We are all moving in a society. If my children go outside of the house, how can I protect them from all the evil things around? Or if everything outside is on the right path, but my family and I am not, then the effect of outside goodness will only be temporary. Both aspects are equally important to work for the betterment of myself and my society. The next thing it says, calling your creator is the right thing to do. Then there is an example of the people benefiting from the guidance. This is like Allah poured rain on earth. The same example is given in Surah Baqarah. Just like the rain is beneficial for earth, similarly this guidance is beneficial for mankind. Just visualize the scene when it is raining. Everywhere there are different effects depending on the conditions of the land. How much a land absorbs water depends on that particular land, not on the water. Same goes for Allah's books and its verses. They are for everyone. But it also depends on a person's heart and own belief how much guidance he can take from these verses. A pure heart is very, very important to absorb pure message of Quran. What do we have in our hearts? Negativity, arrogance, greed, grudges? First, we should get rid of all these things. 
Only then the Quranic verses will take their place in our hearts. Another example is how bubbles come from water. They are lightweighted and don't have any worth regardless how big they look. Same goes for a lot of deeds people do, but they are not accepted by Allah because of their wrong intentions. On the other hand, some people do a little, but their deeds are so precious for Allah because he knows their hearts and intentions are pure. So the point is, whatever we do in the path of Allah, it should be with pure heart and only for him. Now the third ruba of this just starts. It has the attributes of people who accept the guidance given to them. These people are called as Ulul Albab. So who are these people? They are those who honor Allah's covenant. They never break the pledge. They maintain whatever ties Allah has ordered. This is about relatives and maintaining kinship without expecting return from them only for the sake of Allah. Sometimes we have a huge circle of friends, but we don't want to maintain relations with our family. According to Quran, relatives should be priority when it comes to maintaining relations. They have the fear of their Lord. They have patience in all circumstances. They establish prayers. They spend openly and secretly from what Allah has given them. They replace evil with goodness. They find comfort in their hearts in the remembrance of Allah. And then comes a reassuring verse, Surely in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find comfort. I am sure you all have experienced this in your lives. Even when you are reading Quran nowadays, you may have noticed how cool and calm of a person you are becoming day after day. You can notice the changes in your own behavior. This is because now you think before every act, whether it should be done or not. Am I overreacting? Is this really a matter of concern? Should I let things go? Quran actually broads your vision. When you are reading Quran, you are less concerned about food, clothes and daily issues and more concerned about the hereafter and how prepared you are. When we get out of the race of worldly things, we get the peace in our hearts, which eliminates several stresses and tensions of our life. At the end of this roba, Surah Ibrahim starts and then starts the fourth roba of this church. This is a Makki Surah. It has a very important lesson for all of us to understand. It mentions the stories of different prophets. It also tells the believers to have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. All of us know that we need a companion in our lives to listen to our worries and to help us when we need them. Allah says, trust me and you will be never alone. Then Allah warns the people of the day when the punishment will overtake. According to verse 21 and 22, they will all appear before Allah and the lowly followers will appeal to the arrogant leaders. We were your dedicated followers. So will you then protect us from Allah's torment in any way? They will reply, Has Allah guided us? We would have guided you. Now, it is all the same for us. Whether we suffer patiently or impatiently, there is no escape for us. And Shaitan will say to his followers after the judgment has been passed, Indeed, Allah has made you a true promise. I too made you a promise, but I failed you. I did not have any authority over you. I only called you and you responded to me. So do not blame me. Blame yourselves. I cannot save you nor can you save me. Those who believe and do good will be admitted into Jannah. So everyone has to take responsibility of his or her own doing. No other person can be blamed and everyone will see what they had done. Then comes an ayah about Kalma Tayyiba, La ilaha illallahu Muhammadur Rasulullah. Allah compares a good word to a good tree. Its root is firm and its branches reach the sky. An evil word, Kalma Khabitha, is that of an evil tree. It uproots from the earth and it has no stability. This is how a right path is straight, beneficial, and blessed for all in every aspect of life. When a society and its system is built on the basis of this Kalmai Tayyiba, everyone gets justice, rights and peace. Then the prayers of Hazrat Ibrahim salam are mentioned for his cause, family and generations. He prayed, 
My Lord, make this city of Mecca secure and keep me and my children away from the worship of idols. Make the hearts of believing people incline toward them and provide them with fruits. The Juz ends with an ayah about the purpose of the Quran. It says, Quran is a sufficient message for humanity, so they may take it as a warning and know that there is only one God, and so that people of reason may be mindful. Today's question is very easy. What are the signs of Allah in this universe mentioned in Surah Raad? You will find the answer in the beginning of this surah. Tomorrow, we will discuss your answers. There are two du'as in this juz. The first du'a is actually a sentence by Hazrat Yaqub when he was very depressed. I complain of my anguish and sorrow only to Allah and I know from Allah what you do not know. The second du'a is the du'a which we all recite in every salah. رَبِّ جَعَلْنِي مُقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِي رَبَّنَا وَتَقَبَّلْ دُعَا رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيَّا وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الْحِسَابِ My Lord, make me and those believers of my descendants keep a prayer. Our Lord, accept my prayer. Our Lord, forgive me, my parents and the believers on the day when the judgment will come to pass. Tomorrow, we will start just number 14. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.